Welcome back, Kryptonauts, to another episode of Crypto Shill. It's been several weeks since I last produced a video. I've been busy doing overtime at the job, you know, got to get the, pay, the, the bills paid, that kind of a thing. But of course, you know, I'm still very much active in the crypto space and I've been looking at a number of different projects that have been uh, popping up here in the last uh, few weeks. And uh, there's been a significant uh, shift in the direction of what people are interested in right now. And right now there is a heavy interest in this idea of RFI reflect projects. For those that don't know, RFI Reflect projects are essentially these uh, coins that are created uh, based on the RFI Reflect project uh, code base, which essentially provides something called frictionless yield. So frictionless yield meaning that if you hold the coin in the wallet for a period of time, you will get paid a certain amount or percentage of how much uh, trading activity is occurring with that particular coin. In the, and that's basically a forum of, of yield that you'll be receiving. But uh, on the other end of things, there's also a cost, right? So anytime you purchase or sell the token, you will also be uh, paying this tax. And that tax is then in turn paid out to the holders, which is a very interesting idea because this is going to reward those who are willing to hold the token for a longer period of time as opposed to selling it in a short period of time. So it helps combat a situation where people want to quickly go in and out of a token and to make money. So this uh, helps uh, those who are holding the token have a little bit more stability. Uh, the other interesting thing is a lot of these projects have gone to a model that's very similar to the Shiba coin model, which means that you have a super high uh, supply of these coins. And that's basically going to allow people to buy more of the coins and feel like they are more involved in the coin because they, they essentially they have these large uh, amounts that they can buy for a relatively small money. And in uh, several of these projects, we have seen moonshots occurring. We've seen 10x, 100x, really high returns. And this, of course, has caused a lot of interest to uh, happen in this particular area of the uh, crypto space. So people are now have gotten to the point where they're just jumping into these projects with both feet and they're hoping for the next safe moon project. They're hoping for the next FEG project. Uh, they're hoping for that 10, 100,000 X, you know. So uh, I just wanted folks to have a little bit better idea about these projects because because anytime something like this uh, happens, you end up seeing many, many copycat projects uh, cropping up. And you can see that pretty easily if you go to the Token Sniffer site. The Token Sniffer site is actually a very good site because it provides insight about the contracts on some of these projects and lets you know how close they are to any other projects as far as uh, do they have the same type of uh, contract in place uh, for them to work on the network. And then that will also open your eyes to see just how many of these projects exist. If I run through the token sniffer, you can see there are literally tens, maybe even hundreds of these projects that are essentially very close to each other with maybe some minor differences and how much they're going to charge you for their fees to go in and go out, and how much they're going to pay you out, and um, that type of a, of a thing. So it's something people need to be aware of. So now that uh, we've seen this kind of success and we've seen this explosive growth in these RFI tokens, you've got to be more selective uh, about which particular ones you might be interested in going in. Honestly, uh, I see this as a relatively dangerous space in crypto. It's not necessarily something I think people should uh, be considering an investment. I see this more as kind of a mad money play. Uh, but that said, people just can't keep away from these coins. They just feel like they need to jump in. They want to, you know, make that, they want to be that millionaire. They want to make that easy money. So with that, I figured I might as well put together a video that would discuss, well, how would you go about picking maybe a, a better one of these projects? Like, you know, why, instead of just going in blind and, and picking up something because someone uh, said it on a chat or you saw a TikTok video or you saw a post on Reddit, how am I going to go about the process of selecting a good coin? 
I should say that's a relative term good. It's a acceptable coin, I guess you could say. So there's a few uh, different metrics I would uh, have you consider. So the first thing is how much has the team invested in the project? So uh, that's from a couple different angles. One is go to their website, take a look at the website. Is it professional? Is it well laid out? Uh, does it have a nice navigation or words spelled correctly? Uh, does it look like something a person or a team of people would have put some time and effort into? And realize a lot of these reflect tokens can be launched in a matter of hours. So you can you can find out that some of these projects were created in in less than 24 hours. So that's another picture or another perspective from the idea of investment, right? So if if you took let's say 24 hours to produce a particular project, would you say that's a huge investment of your effort? And let's say that project turned around and produced a million dollars in a week. What are the chances that uh, as a developer or as a team you might consider, hey, uh, made a million dollars, maybe I should rug pull. And we're seeing that over and over again. We're seeing a lot of these projects rug pulling because there's just so much money that's made in such a short period of time. And then there's a lot of pressure to try to keep that project going, trying to keep that project profitable and continuing to satisfy the holders of that particular coin. So that is something that's very important to keep in mind is that you have to think about is the is the team really committed so uh, that's a, the next uh, thing I look at is how many team members are involved in producing this particular project you'd be surprised how many of these projects have one person behind them just one person doing everything and that's why a lot of times they don't look perfect is because you know one person doesn't have the full skill set for let's say producing art or producing a nice website layout or producing a coin that has a good con contractual functionality uh, so that's another thing that's important to look at uh, another point I like to make is uh, you also have to consider people's um, it's important to understand why a particular team decided to create a coin and you know why they want to enter the crypto space right so uh, I've met a number of, of folks that have decided to create one of these projects and some of them just wanted to do it as a learning experience uh, some of them are doing it as a hobby some of them are trying to do it as a business and and some of them have motivations of, of feeling like they want to provide a charity or they want to provide a, a crypto coin that is going to be a fair coin because they may have experienced uh, a rug pull or they have experienced that there's a lot of scams out there and they want to do the right thing so you know don't underestimate the value of someone's motivation for creating a coin if someone's doing it just for fun uh, there's a good chance that they may decide not to do it anymore if it's not fun anymore, right? Uh, if someone is doing it just for the pure profit motivation, then, you know, things can go a certain way uh, based on that type of motivation. So just uh, try to keep that in mind when you're looking at these different projects. Uh, one of the things that's most important to me is whether or not the particular project has any utility in mind meaning they're going to do something where they're going to provide real world capability that people are going to want to use uh, from their particular crypto or site so the the most basic use case that is essentially built into a lot of these coins is use of the crypto as money but you know this may not necessarily be the most practical use of the coin because the value of the coins fluctuate a lot and they go up and down and people want to hold on to them and they want to make money on them and not to mention that there's also uh, the potential of you know what do I do from a taxing perspective how do I track all these transactions if I'm using it to purchase things and it's not necessarily an easy thing to do at this point in time to use crypto as money so then where does that leave us well that leaves us with DeFi that leaves us with NFTs uh, that leaves us with uh, any number of uh, features such as maybe charting or uh, providing some uh, statistical analysis uh, on the blockchain you know those are some of the other utility that people are putting together uh, some people are also even doing things as predictive markets all kinds of interesting things and uh, if the if the token has utility beyond just uh, being some form of money 
that's usually going to be a, a good thing, especially if it's something people are interested in. Uh, for example, you know, FEG. I like FEG a lot, and uh, FEG is providing this uh, exchange capability, which is uh, something that's out there in, in other places, but they are doing a, a unique spin on it. So that makes it uh, a more valuable project as a result. So I would say look for the utility. And then uh, beyond that, because of the nature of how these projects are being spun up, uh, you may also say, okay, well, maybe they don't have utility in mind at this moment in time, but they will in the near future. So you want to see if the team has some sort of focus, right? Do they have a direction? Uh, do they have an idea of what they might do next? Uh, you want a, a team that has uh, a well thought out process or plan for uh, moving forward in the future, even if they don't necessarily have a perfect plan in front of them at this uh, point in time. So what that means is you need a team that has good communication skills, that they're willing to speak to their community, uh, take feedback, and do something with that feedback. So that's usually a, a valuable thing to see. And most of these projects, uh, I see they have telegrams, but usually the telegrams are just filled with people or bots that are just spamming and emoji rockets, you know, moon rockets, whatever and just trying to pump up the coin and that's all they really think about. But a very small number of these groups have audio chat. And audio chat to me is one of the key differentiators because that means that they're willing to actually speak to people or at least that's what you hope, uh, hope for. So I'll jump on the audio chat. I'll try to engage with them and see if they're for real. Meaning are they really going to want to listen to me and let me ask them questions and engage with them and see where this thing is going. Find out how open and truthful uh, they're willing to be about what they're doing. Are they above board? Are they transparent? Or are they trying to hide something? And that's uh, there's a lot of value to that. So at least if you get into the project, you know that the, uh, the folks have good intentions or at least have said that they have good intentions. And uh, that's, that's an important metric to consider. And finally, you want to take a temperature of the community engagement. You want to see how people feel about the project. Are they positive? Are they excited? And usually, you know, usually early, early on in projects, that's typically going to be the case. But uh, as a project maybe runs into a couple bumps here and there, maybe the price goes down and people are angry because they bought in at the top, you want to see how they're reacting. Are they feeling that they have some sort of faith in the project or are they just going to you know run and head for the hills and try to exit as quickly as possible with as much of the tokens as they have and uh, that's it's important to to try to see these things before you buy the token right you don't want to be in a situation where you buy it blindly and then decide to maybe do some research or then just kind of watch the chart and see it go down and then figure out well why is it going down you want to know those answers ahead of time at least as much as you can so that you can make a good decision about what to do with that coin or if you even want to get into it in the first place. So I hope that's uh, helpful to folks out there. I hope that uh, they'll take that to heart and realize that you know these moonshots are just that a moonshot and moonshot means high risk a moonshot means very unlikely right something that uh, chances are low of occurring and you need to realize that when you put money in there, that may be the last time you ever see that money. Uh, but if you are careful, uh, do your due diligence, and uh, carefully pick your projects, uh, you can increase your opportunities for success if you uh, understand really what you're doing as far as you understand that you are buying essentially a lottery ticket and that you need to treat it as such, right? So if you start to see some uh, success that maybe you, you'll be a little more uh, careful as far as uh, pulling some of that profit out uh, in case uh, things don't go as well as, as, as expected. So with that I want to now share with you one of the uh, projects I have looked into recently and did some due diligence and hopefully you can uh, benefit from, from it. And I had a conversation with Taco Cat on his project Taco Cat and uh, to me it looks pretty interesting uh, and I'd like to see what you folks think about it. So without further ado, here is my Taco Cat interview.
So, no, no, in here. JC, boom, boom. Hey guys, if you got any questions while we're here, chilling, feel free to ask. I got answers. Oh my god. It's sweet. <laughs> Beautiful. We're about seven point one million dollars now. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. Relax. So you guys know how these coins work, right? Wells buy low, they sell high, they try to swing the price. Yada, yada, yada. You know, like, do, do you guys know what yeah, swinging know. means? You understand? It's not a hold. No, okay, hold so, yeah. The deep. It's, 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 it's essentially preventing mass hysteria, but you can literally go into limit orders and see when people are going to sell. So right now, I can go look at the fact that a one whale wants to sell 200 BNB worth at 35% increase, which is around a $9 million market cap. So we can expect a little dip around $9 million, but provided we get enough, uh, it, it literally won't matter because it won't dip more than what we will get from buys. If you look at the chart right now from how much we pumped, we're already up about a million dollars from when we started this Reddit post, almost a million dollars. So that being said, it, it really evens out in that sense, but there's nothing to be worried about because that's really what the, the liquidity is there to prevent. There might be a little red candle or a, a big dip right there, but that is all it is. You know, it's, I'm letting you guys know this to prevent mass hysteria in a way people think it's dipping. No, people can set orders. They do it strategically and they might try to swing trade, but I don't know if you can swing trade with liquidity like this unless you are a little. I just it's you, nuts. it's hard. It's hard because they're going to pay eighteen percent fees both ways. But what people can also do is they can also set buy orders at a certain price they think it exactly. might dip to, which will counteract the sell orders. You can go to Bog dot finance right now and set a buy order at a at a price that you're comfortable buying at, and it'll help pump it once it if anybody tries to sell. So how much would that? I need to get a. How much of a dip? You can check the, pr the price of that, but don't worry too much about it. No, I'm trying to get the logistics of it to literally just nail this down. Because if you can give people exactly what to expect, they it's it's preventing mass hysteria in a sense. You know, if you program people to be used to something before you just drop a bomb on them, they're going to be more inclined to be like, yeah, next one, let's keep holding. It took me a lot of dips to understand exactly how certain things work, and having to live through those emotions attached to trading it was something you can't really teach people you know it's not i never had anyone there to say hey man this might dip like 20 percent because this wallet is about to drop this and you can see it right here but just be ready for it to go down by there and then it will go back up you know having that logistical like we're already up one hundred forty five thousand dollars in the last couple minutes not even i said seven million we're at a hundred uh seven point uh one five million right now so that being said that dip 200 BNB would literally be equal to what's this BNB priced at right now? I guess I could do it like that. What's the price of BNB? I haven't even checked BNB in a minute. BNB price $509. BNB is bipolar. Jesus. What's BNB at? $509. So that's a hundred thousand dollar sell. Basically, that would just erase the last five minutes of what we did, and we would do it again Stop right after that. talking about it. Stop talking about it. Shut up. Why? We are strong as hell, man. We don't need no warnings, man. Come on, man. <laughs> yes, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> keep it going. No matter what right. happens, people, you, you keep buying, and nothing, nothing matters because there's 9% fees, and your buys will hold. So don't worry about any sales. We don't care. We're diamond handed here. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. I'm trying to explain it to people who might be worried about it. That's all. You, when it, if it, if and when it happens, we can talk about it, and I'll I'll explain it. All right, we're at a seven point two three. Nobody's worried. 
All right, whatever. Whatever. Yeah, you guys know how this works. Nobody we got it. Just make any sense. All right, I'm going to get another post trending. Oh, shit. I fucking close my charts. I believe we are possibly number one right now. One sec. Number two, Crypto Moonshots. Let's keep that going. I'm going to repost in main. Copy. Pause. Honestly, I don't even need to do that. I'll just repost it. <laughs> Someone sold like a fraction of a cent. Hey, what's up? Thanks, man. I don't know why you were muted. I just un unmuted you. I'm not sure why that happens to some people when they come in here. <laughs> Call it. Uh, thank you uh, for being excited. I'm excited to have you here, man. We're painting a fat green candle right now. So if you go uh, in the main chat, we have, I'm going to repin this a little bit. We're just trying to get the Reddit pumping. Click the pinned twice, and you will see the roadmap for the week. And then, yeah, in general, what kind of plans are you, you talking about? Is there anything I can go more in-depth in, into? So, we, we did go over this earlier. Um, oh, God, I, I keep reiterating this. Basically... We, we all know that this, this market is based on hype and whatnot. And think of, I'm going to use SafeMoon as an example. They started as a shitcoin, they grew, and then they implemented a use case on the road. The use case originally was this, with this was supposed to be tequila. Is that a, a blockchain functioning use case? No, it's not. But that being said, the, uh, the use case right now, I'm going to say, is strictly to make money and be a part of the community. Down the road, we have plans and we're in contact with people and we are open to ideas. We have developers that can implement things if it's possible. But that being said, um, this wasn't programmed to be a game-changing Binance Smart Chain use case coin. And I con uh, countered that question before with what coins can you name that do have a use case? We got Chili's, Chiles or whatever, Chez, and bogged. That's that's all that people could name. So other than that, um, I think the most for me the most important thing. Yeah. So Poo Coin, Pancake Swap, like the ones that have exchanges and stuff like that. Like it's already Bog does exactly what Poo Coin does, and then I, I don't think Dex Guru has a BSC coin. But um, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. So if there's anything you have that I can relay to the team that you think we could do the use case, I'd be more than happy to do that. Like, we're always looking to grow. Oh, we have people that can do anything that we need. Uh, most of it's cheap. cheap. You want to hop in on this, maybe? I mean, we have uh, developers, and we have front-end people, and we have marketing people, and, and, you know, we have an ecosystem, but we have a lot planned down the road for this, and we're... Well, I mean... Maybe no money. I don't exactly. know. We have about... I think 13 people in our dev chat right now, but what do you, what's your question? Yeah. I mean, we're developing other stuff that, that fits in with this. It's like an ecosystem. You know, we're basically the first project that a lot of the people worked on was bog, you know, bog about finance, bog tools. And, and then now, you know, that's kind of a different, that's a dip, That's more of like a utility. But basically that's a platform that they developed. And this is a project that's related to that. That is more like a safe moon style coin that, has high high fees, builds liquidity, and gets and has you know memes and themes, and is more of like fun, a fun project that you know. There's you know we're gonna do tequila, we're gonna do a beverage company. We have a lifestyle brand, a, a lifestyle shop going up that I just um, started hosting today on a new website. So you know we're gonna have merch. Yeah, yeah, physical things. Probably we're probably gonna partner with a tequila company. Cause there's, cause they need to be made in Mexico and we're looking into making like a, like a, like a soda style, like beverage with that. And then also having some other products and doing some NFT related things with that. to like have some NFT tied to IRL things. If, if I may chime in real quick in this market, most every in Binance smart chain, what people do is they usually, they seem to be re releasing a project first and then implementing a use case down the line. And I'm going to use safe moon again as an example, they were releasing an exchange because they became big enough, they have enough funds to do that now. And the community is is at that point. This is a completely community-driven market in that sense. It's built on hype. 
uh, fundamentals, lack of technical analysis. Elon Musk literally proved that you could do that with Doge. So right now, uh, yeah, what Chief said is pretty much, I guess, use case. It's not, it's not a, it's not a, the most functional coin. It's not Ethereum in that sense. It's it's not any of these other coins that are revolutionizing the world. But this is a stepping stone in that direction to hopefully implement a use case coin on the road, maybe and be able to integrate that with this, who knows? So that being said, if we can add use cases, I don't know how possible that is with uh, having to like, basically tweak the contract, which you can't do once it's already released and deployed. Um, we, I think we can add contracts onto it, but other than that, we're, we're open to ideas if you have stuff in mind. We can make your imagination come to creation, pretty much. It's not not I, no, it's no. not entirely the same team, but we have some of the, some similar members, and we're it, it's it's well. There's some of the people are the same. I'm not going to go through everybody, but it's a part. We have a partnership, so basically, like Luke is one of the members, and he's the main. He's like the main like CEO type person for Bog that runs marketing and business operations and and directs development as well. He's like director of development, you could say, and um, we you know he's the one that locked the liquidity. For us and verify John is stuff. John checked the contract too. Yeah, so John, they, they John both the have done this. Both of them are involved. John's very involved right now. And basically, when the other night, well, we launched. Okay, so we launched right before the migration. Whether it was good or bad, we decided to do it, and that means that we used locked liquidity contract, which used V1 liquidity. What happened when is that Pancake Swap posted on Medium? I'm actually writing a post about it right now. I just finished it. You'll see it up soon. It's about Bog. They botched the migration, then they rolled it back, and there was no communication, and they don't care about any project but the ones that are on their site. So what happened was when that happened, we went to, back to the Vogue team, and we said, hey, uh, we can't, you know, people are, we're, we just launched. This is a critical time for the coin, and everyone's coming in here and doesn't know how to use the V2, V1. The PancakeSwap website was totally screwed up. And they immediately, so they were going to roll out, basically it's called Bog Swap, or it's, the, it's Bog.finance slash swap. They were going to roll that out in the coming weeks, but instead we got on the phone call with him and I was like, hey, th you need to do this now. No, no pressure, but you need to do this now. And like, basically they were all about to go to sleep in their time zone and instead they stayed up. They just didn't get any sleep. They stayed up and, and rolled out Fog Swap by the early hours of the morning where we are. And it, it was it's perfectly functional. You can go there now. They're upgrading it all, all weekend long. They're actually upgrading it to be way better than Pancake Swap. And it, it still uses Pancake Swap. It basically interacts with the pancake swaps, uh, V1 and V2 liquidity contracts on a cellular level so that you don't have to use their UI. And soon it'll launch for all other liquidity contracts for other, other DEXs as well, like, you know, a swap or some other, something else. So that's like the type of partnership we have in that two projects are closely intertwined from a, you know, uh, helping each other out standpoint. And we're reflecting on them as a, a platform that you can use to use the charts, which they have, they have a wallet estimator, and um, and they have this the swap interface. Yeah. The the number one reason is the liquidity. If you look at SafeMoon's liquidity, I mean, it's gotten slightly better as the price came down because people, all the people, started dumping. But there's still at least one. I think there's at least one um, address above the liquidity pool right now. So that's a very dangerous thing. And you can go on bog.finance uh, or charts.bog.finance, and you can look, type in any V1 contract right now. They're releasing V2 soon, but and you can see the amount of liquidity that's held by the coin. And so most of these RFI clones, first of all, they reflect way too much of the fee. So the reflect fee creates whales instantly and it worsens the distribution issue. Secondly, the liquidity usually sucks. So you, there are some people that before they completely start dumping down from their all-time high, SafeMoon people, some people had like, let's say $100 million USD value of, uh, of SafeMoon, but, but the liquidity pool had like less than that. So you can't actually have a hundred thousand, hundred million dollars of coin if the liquidity pool has, you know, fifty million in it, and and that's the problem with almost all the RFI clones. And we're not just an RFI clone. There's some other things going on, but but we wanted to make a moon coin like this that actually was safe, secure, that had enough liquidity that if you had to sell your stack, that you could. 
it's a safe moonshot. Yeah. And the team, so uh, full transparency, I did marketing for Bog. I've worked on a handful of other successful moonshot projects and have accumulated uh, pretty much a plethora of all the issues they've had from communication, consistency, coordination, the liquidity, just the dev team not being on the same page. So this this project, uh, do, you, do you know how this was created? Did you, did you have any idea on the background of it real quick, just before I explain? So this was created overnight in less than 24 hours. A group of people who got rug pulled, myself and a few others, dumped a bunch of money into a liquidity fund. We, were la we launched it. We got a website developer. We got everyone on board. So normally, this would have been planned out a little better with probably use cases more, more in-depth, like you're saying. But uh, it, it kind of was spontaneous. So it's like releasing the stock and then making the business in that sense. But we... For what we did in 24 hours, like we did it in spite of a rug pull to pretty much make our own moonshot and it's just turned into something way bigger than that. So to answer your question, it's not it's not different if you look at the actual contract other than the, the slight variations of liquidity and stuff like that. Anyone could have made this, but no one takes the time to do it properly. And that's kind of why we stepped in and said, hey, we're going to do this. You know, we got the bot team on, on board. Like... They are on board as can be compared to any other coins that they're working with, in my opinion. I know they're trying to do stuff with SafeMoon as well to migrate over to Bog. But uh, yeah, like basically it's a safe moonshot, if that makes sense. And I'm the one that, one of the creators of this, I will not stop working at this until like I drop, bro. Like I have no reason to not do this. I've successfully marketed other coins and I don't see any reason why I can't do it to this one. If you go look at the chart right now, you'll see a big green candle that's being painted. And that's from the coordination of this of this phone call. Getting on a Reddit post, we got it trending to the top right now. It's as simple as that. Like I, I know what needs to be done. I'm going to make it happen and I won't stop until it does happen. But completely transparent yeah i mean it's it's a moonshot coin 100 percent. we'd like to make it more than that with the store and whatnot and given my background and what i used to do and the connections i've formed through my own personal business i'm able to bring on influencers and people of status down the road and i want to make sure we have everything locked in so like i said this was created in less than a day overnight I want to make sure we have the logo locked in, we have the team locked in before I start bringing serious people on board and I say, hey, we want you to get on, I want you to get on this project. I don't want you to, to just promote me. I want you to be a part of this project. I want you to invest in it with like your emotions and whatnot and kind of, you know, tell people about it down the road. Like we want to make holders out of people and make them believers and shit like this because if something like Doge can fucking skyrocket to that, the only difference between this and that aside from liquidity and the tokenomics, like the inflationary aspect of Doge, which is just terrible, is that it has more hype. It was the first meme coin of that sense. So in, in this generation and where we're at now, we have hit a, a form of epigenetic evolution where we are just able to give value to anything we want as a whole. And memes and whatnot seem to be it right now. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's crazy. But uh that's the logistical end of it, but yeah, it's a moonshot right now, essentially. A safe moonshot. And I think everyone here kind of knows that by now. <laughs> yeah.
that's a, some great insight. Wooly, were you going to say something? Yeah, I, saw some... I was just going to say, you know, it, there, there's more than just the specific tokenomics of this game, right? What's happening here is we're building a brand, and we're building a community. My bad, how's this? You can you can turn him up in the chat if you need to. You hold his icon. Yeah. So so we're not just building a, a meme a meme point here. We're building a community and a brand, right? And there's a lot of business discussion that's going on behind the scenes that you know, quite frankly, the devs aren't willing to share right now. But as this token grows and as those business plans get finalized and rolled out, I think that there's going to be opportunities for Taco Cat to not necessarily just be a meme, right? But to be a little bit something more than that. And so, you know, we, we can talk tokenomics, but, you know, the, the hardest thing that, that any crypto has is trying to get recognition in the mainstream market. And I think that we're pretty well positioned to be able to do that and to elevate this brand in that market. That's well said. I, I like your I like your use case idea though. Yeah, I'm I'm on board with something like that on the road. Uh, go on, Dominic. My bad. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to tell you, like, this is all very new. Like this this crazy craze of these meme coins on the Binance Smart Chain, and I've been for the last week in and out of probably a hundred telegram groups, like a bunch of them. And these aren't the huge ones like SmartCoin or, or, or SafeMoon or Elon Get. It's like a bunch of ones starting today, yesterday. And you guys are by far, like by far the most professional composed, like explaining it well. To be honest, like it's just like chaos. And like, like, you know, but everybody has to realize that this is like a brand new thing and it's, it's pretty crazy right now. And you guys sound really grounded. I don't know, I think it sounds good, man. That's, that's what I'm saying. I appreciate Love that. my life right now, man. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, we're we're all learning as we go as well. You know, like you said, this is a very new process. So I we are all open to ideas and constructive criticism. We're not the type of people to turn you down and say, "Nah, man, this is what we got. Get away." Like, I have so, actually yeah. an awesome idea, man. Do you know the yeah. about the clip who just loves Taco Bell? You just hit him up. He has like one million uh, YouTube sub subscribers, and <laughs> it's really like two million views on every single video. He's a YouTuber who just rides on motorcycles, picking up girls and eating Taco Bell. Man, you gotta just hit him up and make something out of this. <laughs> um, did you uh, did you see that um, baby no money is in chat? Uh, baby no money i think it was in there i don't i don't know what he's doing and yeah he's in the main chat if you go at baby no money bb no money <laughs> so my uh, as, uh, yeah i forgot i'm speaking my uh in, my uh telegram name is incognito taco and like i said i've been marketing for i can name the projects if you like i've been marketing for projects for the past month and a half straight in the Binance Smart Chain. This is my full-time position. I have successfully and consistently been able to do it for coins. And if you go to the chart right now, you will see what's happening with the community effort. It is literally a straight green candle going up. And my goal is to, to do that with this project because I've been basically working for other people in a sense, you know, pumping everyone else's bag and not being able to implement my vision as well as bring people on that I think would really contribute and I'm really happy with how this uh, this team kind of form, uh, formed out from that. But the name, everyone just kind of said in the DGN chat, we called it the DGN chat, um, that after we got rug pulled by Prado coin, they were like, taco, 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 something. And then someone just said taco cat, and it stuck. And we were like, all right, well, that sounds cool. And the more we did it, the more I realized you can relate tacos and cats to mainstream media like crazy. And I was like, all right, this might not be the worst name. And it kind of just happened like that. Everything kind of spun out of control. And we got 5,000 holders in the first two days. And it's just building slowly but steadily. Incognito Taco is the name, though. Uh, I can go in the chat right now. It should be. I'll just say some. Love it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it now. I didn't know it before we made this stuff. <laughs> it's the little things. Oh, man. Uh, is there any way that, uh, I guess, Taco Cat could be used in partnership with restaurants? That's kind of like a Taco Cat app. So whenever you buy, like, tacos from certain restaurants, a percentage would go to maybe, like, a charitable, like, a pool, a charity pool that helps, like, benefits, like, other communities uh, or something like that? I think that's a great idea. The issue with that might be legality between crypto and U.S. dollars. Uh, it mm-hmm. gets into a, a weird territory there. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's not something I'm going to write off at, at all, but uh, I will yeah. actually write that down. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Getting I mean, some I, kind of rewards for it or, you know, I, maybe I, you I, get I, like... We really want to few... tie it to the real world stuff. And so, you know, a, a big question right now is just the business side. What what can you and what can't you do, right? And, and once, once I think everyone knows how to navigate those waters, um, I'm really excited for what's going to come out. Yeah, it's page. actually a crazy idea, man. I mean, you can scan credit cards and something like that. So why don't you bring out a kind of own credit card where you can yeah, like scan a, the amount of like uh, like yeah, a, you know the, like the a existing taco infrastructure QR code, you know? Yeah, listen, the existing infrastructure for that already exists, and to be quite honest, it's not going to work with a coin that has a locked nine percent fee in the contract. But you can definitely get a crypto.com credit card and other stuff. There's another swipe is another one. Um, yeah, and the yeah, card the could features, scan how much here, how much Taco Cat you have on your the balance. Here, account. And we're probably going to reward holders of, of the coin with NFTs that will provide them access to exclusive pro- merchant merchandise and product guys. So if you have a, you know a certain percentage, or if you want to trade for that or whatever, then you can get an NFT which will which will reward you with an IRL product that is you know limited and verified. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of tech under this, but I, I think long story short, you know, if if this brand is a is a real thing, the business that's behind that brand isn't going to leave its community behind, right? The community is the brand, it is the image, and so. You know, I, I'm pretty sure that with the talent that I have seen, that the devs can get together and say, what's the right way for us to pivot towards the next right thing to do for this community? Yeah, I agree with everything that was said so far. And even the, the constructive criticism about the use case, it is noted and absolutely being taken in con- into consideration. Excuse me. So... Guys, I've got a quick question. I know it's been addressed a million times, probably. My eyes are just burning from looking at this stuff for hours. Hey, what what um version of um pancake swap do I got to use to swap out to to? Talk to you you, you want to use V one for right now. We're not going to do V two contracts. Our liquidity is locked for now, and we're going to use V one. The best way to circumvent pancake swap, and and by far a superior user interface, more lightweight, more efficient, is to go to bog finance slash swap for slash swap s a w s w a p so b u g g e d dot f i n a n c e for slash s w a p bogs dot finance slash swap they're 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 even improving it as i say this that like literally on i know the developers they're improving it it has a wallet estimator on the charts function it's the, it'll i just use the wallet estimator it will calculate the value of your staked coin so if you're staking take on like bp or something it's like auto stake auto compounding, it'll actually still calculate the value of that, which nothing else does. So it has a wallet estimator that loads immediately that's super accurate, and it has the charts next where the wallet estimator is, and you can do swaps right now and limit orders. They're also improving the swaps to integrate the V2 contracts, so soon you'll be able to swap V1 and V2, and you'll be able to add and remove V1 liquidity, which PancakeSwap removed the ability to add V1 liquidity. Luckily, Taco Cat uses an auto an auto staking auto liquidity method, but but other con, other projects that where you have to manually add liquidity through Pancake Swap to have LP pairs and get staking rewards, they do not allow. So they are screwing over all the V1 projects that have locked locked liquidity contracts. But t- by the end of the day, tomorrow this week, very soon, the bog the bog swap will have integrated liquidity adding and removing, and you won't ever really need to use. The, the crappy, hard to use, bad for newbies pancake swap UI. So that's where I recommend going. But if you have to use pancake swap, yes, choose the V1, which is at the end of the page. Uh, I'm up for 
went down to try out Bog. I mean, I'm still kind of new to all this stuff. Is is it? Would you suggest using Trust Wallet? The D apps do that, or just is that? Yes, not good I, yes. Trust Wallet is amazing. All I just used it. All of the Bog stuff works perfectly with Trust Wallet. Thanks a lot, man. You guys, you guys are good with information. I'll give you guys that for sure. <laughs> Thank you. It's a team effort here, man. If it was just me answering these questions, I'd be fucked. And that's unfortunately how it is with a lot of these projects. It's just one or two devs, and they just want to make money. I'm not even joking. I'm in like a hundred Telegram groups in the last week, and like I was excited at first, and by the end of the week, I'm like, fuck all of this. Excuse my language, you know. But there's a there's a couple that panned out, and you, but by far this is the best chat I've ever heard, like ever. Not any of them. Besides maybe Happy Coin, Happy Coin's kind of cool too. But like that, that's a good community too. Hey, they're showing other pro No, I'm just kidding. You can talk about other projects in there. <laughs> like, I have no idea what the price is or anything. Like I'm just saying, the community is like grounded and they're super nice too. But like I'm just saying, that's two two people out of a hundred, like literally like you guys. So you guys are way above. Appreciate it, man. Seriously, happy to have you here. Oh, we're just cool. Yeah, I'm completely transparent about it. I've marketed, I was in four hours after, so my, my experience started with Safe Mars on Buy a Smart Chain about a month and a half ago. I put 800 bucks in, it went down to $100 overnight. I messaged the dev and I said, what's up, man? And I quote, he said, this is a hobby. Someone is making a lot of noise. Can, can we figure out? I'm not sure who that is. Hey, Calvin, do you mind uh, turning your mic off for a sec? Oh, my bad. I didn't even know it was on. Sorry. Yeah, just mute it. No? Oh, there you go. So I was in there four hours after launch. It was my first experience with it. I looked at the chart. It was pumping. I was like, whoa, this is going to keep going. And I had no idea about rug pull scams or anything like that. It was a basic safe moon fork. It wasn't a rug pull. But it was a dev who had no idea what he was doing. And a little background before that, I have my own creative business. And it was rooted in events, uh, festivals, concerts, weddings, government stuff, anything you can name. And that was basically about planting seeds and watching them grow. You meet someone at a show that you know is an influencer, a, a manager. I want to get to know him. I want to take a picture of him so he can message me after and say, hey, man, can I get that picture? And then I can start and initiate a chat, develop a relationship that I know will flourish into something bigger than just a picture. So I took Safe Mars as a learning experience. I took that $700 loss, which is a lot to me at the time, and I said, man, I'm going to learn how to do this so I can do it myself once I'm – hold on. Someone is still echoing. God damn it. So what I did was I created the – Dude, who is echoing right now? I'm trying to find them, but I, I can't find them. I don't know where. The... Testing one, two, testing. Okay, that's better. So I uh, took it as a learning experience. Me and my friend, he's in here. Wapper Junior, Joey, Joey Wapper Junior, in here. Yeah. We yep. uh, right. yeah, he's right here. We uh, messaged the dev, and I shit you not, he says. I don't know, man. This is a hobby for me. He didn't have any interest in making the project grow. He didn't care about it at all. And if you look at Safe Mars right now, I'm actually going to bring it up. Uh, let me see where they're at holder-wise. They're at 334,000 holders. Okay? So this is, if you look at the chart on day one, you will see what I'm referring to. When it, it was a pump and then a dump. It dumped down crazy. And I said to Joey, man, we're going to learn how to do this. There's a lot of money in this. And we were both skeptical at the time. We paired up with this dude named Black Fox, who was also in the chat, and basically created this guy a website. I literally created his dev team, which I can show you right now. I still have access to as the owner. And then created a marketing chat for that. And that was a, a stepping stone learning experience into my next project, which was Bogged Finance. And throughout Safe Mars, I regret selling my stack because I sold it after it went up to... $1,100, and I was like, fuck, or $900. I was like, fuck, I can get out of this. I got a little profit. And then if I held that, man, I'd have a half a million dollars by now. So I didn't know that that was long-term in a short-term market, if that makes sense, until now, looking back. You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. So after that experience, and I sold that, I, uh, I tried to branch out into other coins and just try to work my angle. I wasn't really sure what I was doing, wasn't 100% sure how to market it, although I had experience from other things in life, 
I wanted to see what I could do and take it as a learning experience. So I hopped onto Bob Finance. I messaged Luke for like three days consistently. And it was so hard to get a hold of Luke. I could get a hold of everyone else but Luke. And I'm sure he's bombarded by messages. So it's understandable. But like that was chaos at first. And I was like, damn, I got to be persistent with this. Like some of these people aren't answering. And I I got a hold of him. I hopped on the team with marketing. We pumped it. And there was, there was one pump where it literally went 4x in volume. If you know Bog Finance, they have... The best liquidity, I'm pretty sure, on Binance Smart Chain. Their staking mechanism it's, is it's over, flawless. It's over 50%. And it actually yeah. just went down because of the, the, the botched pancake swap thing. It was well over 50%. So I can't control when whales sell and manipulate the price. That's out of my control. So for a month straight, I was driving myself crazy trying to figure out how to get this price up to like an extraordinary extent. You know, dude, like it, it was pulling my hair out because I was making the volume go four X, but the price wasn't reflecting of it. So after that, I kind of stepped back, had to pull myself together, hopped on to uh, what do we do? So the past week, I kind of spread out a few projects. There was Moon Pirate. If you look at that, the chart where it started booming, I created their marketing team with that as well. Chinchilla, which is a community made coin. I didn't have any control over that. I just pumped the coin. I put 300 bucks in, went up to eight grand. I don't know what happened to it after. I haven't looked at it since. There was a coin called No FOMO, no use case, nothing, but it wasn't a rug pool. We all went in, pumped it up, got out, did our thing. And then there was one, this is when I realized this was like, okay, this I need to take this serious. A coin was released the other day called Dog Shit Coin. Okay. On Reddit, it said, This is dog shit coin. Do not buy this. It's literal shit. Had no socials, no site, nothing. I put 180 bucks. In at a 4K market cap, got in contact with the dev, and in two hours, that $180 was $23,000. That was life-changing to me, and I was like, dude, this is insane. You just have to learn how to, to work your angles. So the consistency of being able to do that over and over and over again built up, and I've wanted to release a coin since Safe Mars, but I'm happy it took till now to be able to do that. And I, I think I said what forced us to do this was the other night we were in a rug pool. I put in a, a grand and a half and went up to a hundred thousand dollars. And then the dude pulled the rug in 20 minutes. It was nuts. I've never seen that kind of money in my life that fast. It was the most insane thing. And right after that, we all got in the chat. We were like, let's throw into a wallet. We got the liquidity pool form. We put in like twenty, thirty thousand dollars And within 24 hours, Taco Cat was formed. We did no marketing prior. And we had like over a thousand or 1500 members and, almost 3,000 holders in the first day just because of the connections that we've developed throughout the past month and a half throughout Binance Smart Chain. So when I say planting seeds, it, it really comes down to that. I have on my Telegram like 10 folders of chats. And I went through this before. You guys, you can go into your settings on Telegram and click folders and it will save you a lot of hassle. So I have 10 different folders of chats. I have like core chat, dev chat, YouTube promo, personal like, this is a, a career for me, man. And being able to do it with people that I know share the same vision is huge to me. And even if this isn't a use case coin, so to speak, it's a stepping stone in that direction. This morning, I had a chat with two friends that I've known for a long time. And they are they are very wealthy. They, they have extreme connections to influencers that would blow this shit out of the water. It's not something I want to completely utilize for Taco Cat but more for a use, co use case coin down the road, which would be probably completely unrelated to Taco Cat. But what we're doing right now is we're setting the standard for people from what to expect from this dev team. And that's why we're in these calls. That's why I haven't slept more than three hours in the past four days. Like, it's fucking crazy, man. So it's just all blowing up so fast. But uh, I hope that kind of like fills you in a little bit on where I've been. It's been chaotic past month and a half. It's been up and down, up and down. Damn, dude, three I, hours is a lot, man. Then you're sleeping too much. You got to sleep less. <laughs> Fucking losing my shit here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciate that. It's the best team, yeah. It really is. It's amazing. As long as you remain in the voice chat, I'm sure we'll keep pumping. Have you seen the charts? <laughs> Are you talking to me or uh, Power? Okay, he's talking to you. Power, I'm have you, have you. you yeah, I'm looking at the chart right now. Have you looked at the uh, the chart, Power, by any chance? 
Yeah, so you see that green candle. That was just from the past hour and a half-ish on this phone call. We got everyone coordinated, and that's what we wanted to do. I've spent the past day not marketing as much as I should have, and you can see the downtrend right there. The last pump, there's the biggest pump we have on that chart was from the last Reddit post, and that's exactly when Pancake Swap did their fuckery. It went down and painted that big red candle after. We would have kept going if that didn't happen. So we're trying to get momentum back, but we had to get everything organized. <laughs> Creating the coin first and then getting the team together was, it's a struggle, but it's, it's rewarding in a sense. You know, everyone's coming together. And I, I stress the community aspect of these coins so much. Safe Moon, Safe Mars, they would not be what they are without their community. The community is like a chart. And as it goes up, the community goes up and it, it fills in more. And as it goes down, sure, you might lose some members, but the next time it goes back up, more people will have survived a dip together. More people will be attached to the project and more people will be inclined to keep it going, you know, until it's self-fulfilling and self-efficient, essentially. So right now we're just doing everything we can to blast it off. But uh, sorry, go, go on. I didn't oh, catch sorry. Uh, did you um, did you see the latest uh, message in the marketing chat? Just making sure. I uh, mean, uh, no, I've been my bad. Oh, no. Marketing. Oh, from George? Yeah. Willie, I'm, can you check the marketing chat? I, I don't know what we're doing with the logo. You guys can okay. figure that. I trust you guys and the community okay. to, to decide on that. Yeah. It, it yeah. doesn't have to be run by me. All right. So, we'll figure it out. Whatever you do, just keep it. Have a taco cat in it and make sure it has the outline, like the one that we're kind of running with now. That's all I can say. Gotcha. So taco shape, cat face, giant penis, right? Yes, precisely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll work it out, man. <laughs> Thank you. All right, uh, power, but uh, yeah, man, I really hope that clears some things up. I, I get your concern, and I have, have, and I have, and have had the same concerns that you brought up the entire time working here. Being behind the scenes on projects really helps ease that that peace of mind because what I invest in dog shit coin, what I, what I invest in Bingus, if I didn't know what was going on, what I have invested in Moon Pirate, probably not. You know, they sound like scam coins. Ta what I invest in Taco Cat, if I didn't know the people and I wasn't on this call and I just saw like the red post, maybe depending on the chart, but I don't know. You just got to do your research, I guess. So I'm happy you're here and asking questions. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for uh, for sharing your, your piece in this. Anytime, anytime. Full transparency. You know, usually we don't we don't show all the projects in here, but uh, you know, obviously I just did. But you should definitely get a bag because this is going 10x from here. I'm pretty sure. And you should also <laughs> you should also get some bog because it's really, it's really cheap right now, and that's it's way undervalued. And it's a it's a not only is a partnership, but for your looking for your whole use case thing, it's. It's the only platform on Binance Smart Chain that's that's really doing anything. So go pick up a bag right now before, because I just I'm doing a bunch of marketing for that. Also, it's about the moon, so you want to get a bag before it goes up in price. Yeah, if you want to if you want to talk about use cases, go to BogTools.io and just go to their exchange, their charts. Um, they have the most use cases out of any coin on Binance Smart Chain, but it's it's a personal preference. Everyone invests in what they want to invest in. I have Bog as well. That was a project I was working on for over a month. So it's emotional you attachment buy, at that point. But you should buy Taco Cat, too. You should buy Taco <laughs> Cat. You should buy Bog. Those are really the only two coins I hold, actually. I don't. I mean, I... I mean, did, you, did, you ever, did you guys ever see 100, nearly 100 people listening to the deaths of a coin? That has to be... That has to be... Good shit, man. You gotta do this. You are doing your. Come on, man. Come on, man. You know That's so Taco Mavio. Cat, man. You already know who Come Taco on, Cat man. is, man. Yeah, you already know, man. You, 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 you gotta stop like, this, is man. Is that a recording? Like, are you. No, that is literally. Dude, that is him. I, I met him in Moon Pirate. He is the <laughs> most hyped person I've ever seen. <laughs> Bro, that's the like shit, the man. The DJ is going to work again, man. Gotta do my work. 
Yeah. Mo. Come on, me and Fabio. What's oh, that power, Cosmic? Slippage. Oh, it's nine percent uh, fee, so ten percent works or nine point five. There's a way they do it lower by like do adding a point five to the end of that mount yeah, and pocket cap, but, cap, but um, not ten works. It, you won't get screwed on slippage. It, it it'll it'll route for, well. So real quick, the reason it's ten, oh, we have eight percent going back to the liquidity and one percent redistributed. It's basically a community chest. Like liquidity is a community chest because it's you know you don't. Ooh, there's no point in owning a power. coin. There's no coin, point in owning a coin that you can't sell without, you know, like that's the point of this. It's to buy and to sell. I mean, yes, you can you can trade it, you can exchange it, but any, you know, people aren't using safe moon to to pay their bills. They're, they're selling it first. <laughs> and the top the top guy, the top wallet on safe moon, you can go look at the transactions. It's a public blockchain. Um, he uh or she they were cashing out five million dollars a day. And and yeah, the price is not the price nuts. was not going down. The reason is because so many new people were buying it and buying his bags, and he was dumping on everybody. And then eventually, people caught wind of what was happening, and other people were like, "Oh, I want to cash out." And they they it, the market cap over it dropped in half like within a few days. And then there was all the fud and everything. But it's not that it's not safe. It's you know, it's not safe because there's not like good liquidity. But it's not like there was a rug or anything. It just didn't have the proper. Construction it didn't have the proper container. It didn't have the proper ah, taking elements. I gotta send this man taco. Uh, so. I'm gonna hop off the call here soon. But does anyone have any like technical questions or want to talk about like a more stuff? Because I'm gonna have to go here. You've been very helpful, Chief. Chief, I appreciate it. We just say thank you from all of just the community. Check your PM after you leave the voice chat again. Okay, I'm looking right now. I don't, but I don't see one from you. Yeah, man. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, Kryptonauts. Peace.